hopefully I'll be making videos more often and there'll be better videos. There'll be very, very, very good, I promise you, the best videos. Oh, dude. I'm all out of steam. Hmm. <clears throat> Hello, Under Achievers. This is going to be a long one, so if you don't have time to watch it right now, add it to your watch later. But if you're going to sit and watch me chat for, 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 for an amount of time, I don't know how long it's going to be, it's going to be a long time. Then enjoy, sit down with some popcorn. We'll have some sort of fun, I think. Obviously, before we actually get into the video, I have a couple things that I've got to let you guys know about. I have a UK headline tour in November. We're going to all these places with Taylor Acorn and South Arcade. We've got VIP tickets. Uh, most of them are almost sold out, so grab them quick. And Bristol, as the show, general admission is about to sell out. So grab all that below. I've also been in the studio a bunch, so there is brand new music coming very soon. And by very soon, I mean September 5th. My brand new song, Pet With The Tism, is out then. And lastly, I have a Palestinian merch t-shirt where all the profits will go to Palestinian charities. So if you want to grab that, it's really cute. It's got a little rat and a watermelon down there in the description below. But yes, onto the video. Hello. So I wanted to start by saying that I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm not, I'm not stopping doing this sh now that I'm a musician. This is the first YouTube video I filmed in like over a month, which is a big deal for me. Like that's a long time. It's been a long time coming. I, I post YouTube videos weekly, or at least I'm supposed to do. You can tell that I have not been consistent the last little while, but I've been going through a lot recently, been having loads of, you know, realizations, been going to therapy, talking about my feelings, and not trying to avoid them, and like, put them off for a little bit. I feel like I just needed to make this video, like I needed to sit all day today, like I did today, and just write down all my feelings about YouTube. I just need to get this shit off my chest and like, put it out there before I can carry on with like, normal YouTube videos. I'm sure you'll understand why if you stay till the end of the video, which you should. Pretty much the gist of it is I have reached a point in my life where, you know, I, I kind of just want a refresh for this YouTube channel. I have had a crazy few years. I would say the past five years of my life have been the most insane. I feel like every year it gets a little bit crazier, a little bit sillier, a little bit more stressful, and I'm very easily overwhelmed. And I haven't really had time to just sit down and think about what I want to do with this channel because you know it's, it's not just me posting videos every week I have like my entire life um, on here so I feel like I should maybe think more about it these past few years I've been completely all over the place in my public life obviously I've been so inconsistent but also in my private life um, I just that there, there, there's always just a lot going on but I think I finally start to realize what's been going wrong for me in terms of the YouTube channel thing and it's just that I just don't enjoy filming videos anymore. I don't enjoy thinking of thumbnails or title ideas or posting them. I, I, I don't enjoy any of it at the moment if I'm being super real with you. This channel used to be my like little safe space. It used to be my creative outlet. And obviously so much has changed over the years that like that was never gonna be a thing forever. And none of this is you guys' fault, by the way. I feel like I'm your dad like telling you that me and your mother are breaking up. That's not at all what's happening. The point of this video is that I am currently not enjoying making YouTube videos. And th the, the outcome, I hope, of me doing this is that I will enjoy making YouTube YouTube videos. They'll be more consistent. You guys will see <laughs> that I'm enjoying myself more in the videos. I think it's a good outcome for everybody, but like, we just gotta get, get past this little awkward stage here. There's like a vague structure of what I'm gonna be talking about today. Obviously starting with why I started making YouTube videos onto like what's changed in my life and with my channel. And then uh, look what the future of this channel is gonna be. Cause yeah, I'm probably not being very reassuring right now. So, why did I start my YouTube channel? I feel like so many of you have heard the same story I exactly two million times, so I'm just gonna make it quick. I was a closeted trans guy in a boarding school. I didn't really have many people in my real life that I could be myself to, especially not in a Neville boarding school. So the internet was the only place where I could find other people like me, other trans people, other people that like My Chemical Romance, obviously. So I started off on Instagram as a My Chemical Romance fan account, and then I started teaching myself guitar. I got a guitar for my 14th Christmas, and then I started posting singing covers, and and because this was back in the day, you could only post 15 second videos on Instagram. So, obviously, the natural thing that I was going to do is move those videos to YouTube where you could post longer videos. And that move over to YouTube kind of just set the ball rolling and I, I've, I still feel like I haven't really caught up. And then, like, the instant dopamine hit from people being like, oh, wait, this is actually good. That, like, drove me to keep making content. It gave me a lot of confidence. Like, in the real world, I could not sing or perform guitar in front of anybody, but if I just set up a camera, it was like just doing it to myself, except I could put it out to where other people could see it. I made friendships online at that time that I still have now. Like, Phoenix is like one of my best friends. I met him when I was like 16, 17 doing this shit. Hi, this Hi. is Phoenix. Tell me something about yourself. I'm, I'm... <laughs> and as well as obviously just having a place where I could, you know, have a creative outlet, post about things I was proud of. I also found a place where I could make community and find other trans people and gay people. And I could learn a lot about what the hell was going on with my head because I did not really have any resources in real life that 
that could, that could explain what the f*** was going on. And I feel like a lot of you guys joined me here because I was just super honest and open about the way that I was feeling about myself, about the world, about trans stuff, and just general life. So that's what the YouTube channel became. There's a little bit of context of like why I started doing this. We're just gonna move straight on uh, to a very big one. We're gonna talk about how much the internet has changed in the past five, ten years. So I lived my life kind of entirely online. I had my own little safe community where everybody kind of knew each other. I used to host meetups in London and Hyde Park and I would meet people in person that I knew from the internet and it, it was really nice. And then uh, uh, COVID happened. I truly don't know if I'm ever gonna understand the repercussions of how much COVID changed the online space. But what I will say is that when COVID happened and lockdowns happened, everybody in the entire world moved their entire lives on the internet. And for me, that felt kind of like an invasion of my privacy, if you know what I mean. I felt like people were kind of intruding on our little niche communities that we had built over the years. I noticed a lot more hate comments because people that would never come across my content because they weren't spending that much time online were now finding me and finding my content and finding all new ways to insult trans people. Those new internet dwellers also came along with their love of misinformation. And pretty much the internet has just never really been the same since COVID happened. It's, it's never gonna go back to the way it was. And that's not just in terms of like, like my experience of like being an influencer and having a new audience. I think it, it's such a big change that it's completely, you know, redesigned how people function. I think it's changed how people think. And a big thing that I've noticed that has impacted me and impacted everybody, I guess, is that everything is now about money. Obviously everything has always been about money. We live in a capitalist system. But when COVID happened and everybody was on the internet, advertisers went wild. They went insane. Social media companies went insane. They knew how much they could cash in on the internet. And obviously that meant that like apps like Instagram had a whole new tab just for shopping. These social media companies have completely changed the way that they work in order to, you know, just make everything about clicks, about sales, about streams, about views, about monetization. And the YouTube algorithm is always changing, uh, but it's a well-known, not even hidden secret, I would say at this point, that the way that YouTube has changed in the past few years um, I would say that most creators that I've ended up speaking to about this have found that like the content of their video is no way near as important as it used to be and that the algorithm favors only thumbnails, only titles, only clickbait and it's less about what you say about the community you build, about like the passion that you maybe share with the person viewing your content and more just about these companies trying to get people to click on your videos because that means that more people will click on the ads that they're putting on the video. I'm just like, like this is this has become especially obvious with TikTok. This is all going somewhere, by the way. This is applicable to me, not just the general internet. But can I just say now that like, short form is king. Short form is all people give a sh about now. When COVID happened, everybody was bored, out of their minds, staying at home, just like mindlessly scrolling. TikTok came about, destroying more of our very, very, very short attention spans that we already had. And the impact of TikTok is so big that literally every other social media platform had their own little TikTok juke. Instagram has reels, YouTube has YouTube shorts, Twitter, even the way that videos are formatted, you scroll through and it's kind of like a for you page. Same with Facebook. And the point I'm making is that this means that people interact with the algorithm more than they interact with the like creators that they want to interact with. They just kind of scroll and like take in the information in the videos that the algorithm serves. And obviously this means these companies are able to make money easier because they can just put ads between every single short video rather than in the middle of long form videos. And we've just become accustomed to just seeing that many adverts. And the reason this is an issue for me and has impacted the way that I operate on these platforms is that it just feels so hollow that it feels like the entire infrastructure around me and other people that are doing similar stuff to me is entirely geared towards making money. It's not geared towards people finding community or making really meaningful connections. It's more just like how much information can we fit on one page before people swipe away. And the rise of TikTok also means that like everybody is an influencer. Your, your local gym bro is selling my protein. Your nan is selling her own cleaning products on TikTok. Every three or four videos on TikTok is either an advert from TikTok or it's just somebody trying to sell you some bullshit from TikTok shop. The internet initially was a place for me to like see real people and invest in their lives kind of. And now it's just like, oh, I need another fidget cube. Cause the fidget cube I bought last week from TikTok shop. Oh, that, that wasn't enough. Constant garbage being shoved down your throats. And that's not only annoying, obviously, as somebody that creates stuff, but it's also annoying as a consumer of this stuff. Cause I, like, I just don't enjoy being on the internet anymore. And this is without even mentioning the fact that like TikTok has created this epidemic of 10 year old girls that are addicted to or obsessed with buying skincare products 
that are designed for women in their 50s to stop them wrinkling. The way I grew up on the internet, like, 10 years ago, was not healthy back then. Like, Omegle, not healthy. Kick, not healthy. But there's something super insidious, and there's just, like, such a horrible vibe about the way that social media platforms work nowadays. Everything is about selling. Everything is about the first two seconds of a video being catchy enough or clickbait enough that it keeps people watching. And, you know, how I said earlier on, the reason that I started making videos was because I wanted to, you know, find other people like me. Like, I needed that space. I didn't make videos because I wanted to make money or become famous or anything. Like, I was on the internet because that was what I needed at the time. I needed that connection. There's just such a horrible thing that, that's always in the back of my mind whenever I log onto any app where I'm just like, oh, this is, this is not how it used to be. And you know what? I'm gonna say the C word. Capitalism. <laughs> Capitalism. Capitalism is why my life as a content creator is so hard. Cry for me. Uh, Jesus. I feel bad for my little self growing up on the internet 10 years ago. I feel so much worse for teenagers nowadays where like this is just what they get. Like this is just what you're served. You're preconditioned to just have a zero attention span. To, to only pay attention to whatever you're fed by an algorithm. To me the overwhelming thing is just like the, the, the connection isn't there. The community isn't there. And that's not to say that I don't feel that sense of community with you guys. I'm so lucky that like I've been doing this for so long that there are people watching videos of me every single week for like seven years or whatever. Like I've, I've grown up with some of you guys. But I, I think there's just something so daunting about making content in 2024. Not only as like an influencer, but also as a musician. Like it just sucks. It's not fun for anybody. And there's, there's too much information for my tiny little brain to process. It just feels soulless. Like, soulless is the way I would describe it. And a thing that really gets to me, entirely relevant to short form content and capitalism and me complaining about how the internet changed. This is what my YouTube analytics page has shown me recently. This is the same for like the past couple years. In the last 28 days, uh, the people that were watching my videos, 78% of them were watching only shorts. So only like the equivalent of like TikTok. 9% we're watching both my long form videos and my short form content. And only 13% of you guys are watching long form videos, which if you put it into perspective, like before YouTube shorts were a thing, like we were just posting long form videos every single week. That was our thing. That was something to look forward to every week. And that's what I would put my time into. I'd be like, oh, what's going to be exciting for them? What's going to be something that I enjoy filming? But the fact that it's like very obvious to me that the thing that people want to see is like, clickbaity shorts with like really catchy opening lines. That's fine. Like I, I'm not going to sit here and like sh people for wanting that, but it's just, you know, it's a bit demoralizing. And again, this all circles back to there being less emphasis on community and genuine connection, which, which is why I wanted to do this. Sh and I feel like at this point, there's just this very obvious disconnect that I'm feeling where before people were really invested in like the people creating content, like they would have their favorite YouTubers that they didn't, they're not just idolize, but they would like relate to. Whereas now I feel like people are more fans of like apps. They're like, yeah, I'm on TikTok all the time. And it's not like they look forward to weekly videos from a creator because people post like four TikToks a day nowadays, which means that essentially if you're reaching new viewers, they're only spending a couple seconds with you rather than however many minutes a long form YouTube video would be. And I cannot explain, like I would not be able to put into words how obvious that is and like how clear the feeling is for me when I go to social media events. Like the difference between however many years ago where you go to these events and there would be like very distinct communities of YouTubers where they've like collabed with each other because they're genuine friends and like they've grown up together, they're all part of the same thing. I'm not the sh on TikTokers. I, it's just like a completely different thing. You go to these events and they're like TikTokers that people will be like, oh, I recognize you. They won't know your name. They won't really care about you in a very, I don't want to say meaningful because like however people operate on the internet, that's their business. But just, just in terms of the way that like I'm used to, there isn't that strong sense of community, which is what I'm after. And also the fact that like so many TikTokers nowadays, like TikTok is the app that will blow you up in a day. There has never been another app where immediately you're just suddenly famous. Like one TikTok can get like 60 million views and you're set for life. Now you have a career in social media. But because the rise is so quick and there's this lack of genuine human connection, People will blow up and then fall off immediately. The amount of musicians that I've seen get signed after one song going viral and then the label aren't happy that not every single song has gone viral and they're just dropped. And the amount of TikTokers that, you know, have tried to make books or have tried to do touring or have tried to do anything outside of TikTok. Trying to get people to watch you on TikTok and then go to different platforms is impossible because there isn't that like human connection. And also like everybody is so chronically online that somebody can make the smallest mistake and it can follow them for the rest of their life just because they said the wrong thing accidentally once. It must feel like being sucker punched. I'm I'm very grateful that that I started doing this shit when it felt like it was more wholesome. And I'm not I'm not I, I'm I'm really scared of this coming across like I'm better than TikTokers because I, I don't feel like that. It's just like it's just different.
And obviously, I just got to say that this is not the people who are viewing the content's fault. It's not their fault at all that, like, this is this is just how capitalism works. They're, like, they find the easiest, most streamlined way to make money and they roll with it. And they don't really give a shit about how that impacts the people making the stuff. You know what I mean? I don't blame people for, you know, trying to make ends meet, selling, like, eyelashes, not real ones. It's just, it just feels like going on the internet is a big old, it's, it's like walking into Times Square and being like, oh, there's an advert, oh, that's big and shiny, oh, there's another one, oh, it changed, oh, look at that, that's interesting. Like, I just, it, that's how it feels. And trying to compete with that is just impossible. This video is just gonna be one big old rant. Uh, I'm so sorry I have to sit through this, but it just needs to come out. A big thing for me is that I feel like a lot of people nowadays start doing social media for reasons that are very different to mine. And I'm not trying to say that everybody that's starting out social media nowadays is only doing so for the money or to start a business or for the fame. Um, it, it's hard for me to feel like I have to compete with these people that are very business minded and see everything so differently to me. Being spoken to about like, you, you, you should just collab with whoever you find on the street because you can, you know, you can combine numbers. You can combine numbers. Where for me, it's like, mother I'm not inviting anybody on my channel if I do not know them in and out. Like, that is that is not what this is. I, I know that, like, being a YouTuber or being an influencer is, like, one of the most popular career choices that, like, kids say they want to be when they're older. And you know what? It is great that you can just start a successful business by creating an audience on the internet, and you can do whatever you want. You can make money very easily on the internet. That's a good thing. I think it is a good thing. But it just drives me so insane that now there are so many added steps, so many added hurdles, so many things in, like, the YouTube analytics or in any social media that you have to be doing or you should be doing or you should be prioritizing or you should be doing AI or you should be doing this thing, adding these keywords to reach this audience because then maybe they'll watch this kind of video and then they'll buy whatever. Like, I just, it's exhausting. And I know this is a me problem that I let this rot my brain, but it, it, I cannot explain how difficult it is to escape it because there's, there's no blueprint for doing the work that I've done because this work wasn't work. It started out as a hobby and then I enjoyed doing it and then it made me money and then allowed me to do other things that I enjoyed doing. So I just followed through with it. But Jesus Christ, it is just so demoralizing to do this out of love and out of a need to do it. And then to feel like if I'm not following certain trends on this social media or that social media that the algorithm is gonna punish me. I just feel like there are so many hidden secrets. Like I, I am in contact with all like the big social media companies. Like I've been to their offices. I've spoken to them in great detail about the way that I'm feeling. And if I, as somebody who has very easy access to all these like industry secrets, if I find it difficult to put up with, I cannot imagine how people who don't have that access are finding doing this. I don't want to be like, woe is me. Like I get to do whatever I want and it makes me money. I don't really, <laughs> I really don't want to come across like that. But I just want to say that like, nobody told me how to do this. Nobody really told me when I started how I was supposed to do this. And now that I'm in contact with people that are telling me that, my brain just <laughs> explodes. Like mother I just want to make something I'm proud of and enjoy it and make something that I think w will make people a little bit happier or brighten up their day. And I'm becoming increasingly aware that like my impact on the internet is far more important than me just like posting videos I enjoy. Like that's not the important part for the majority of people that are engaging with my content. Now that that's out of the way, you know, I've explained uh, how the internet has changed and how that's affected me. I'm not just gonna sit here and sh on the internet and social media companies and blame everybody else for my difficulties making content because obviously I don't have a boss. I don't really have somebody telling me what to do and that they'll scold me if I don't do it. I, I more just have a lot of people saying, hey, you're missing out. Hey, you're missing out. Hey, you're not doing this. Hey, if you did this, you'd be doing way better. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I am the pilot of my own life. And a lot has changed in my life in the past 10 years that I've been making content. To be completely honest, up until very, very recently, as in literally today, um, the past two years, whenever I thought about planning a video, sitting down to film one, even just setting up my camera, setting up my light, I had this intense pit in my stomach of just like anxiety for, for, for the fact that like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit in front of camera and pretend that I give a sh about this silly TikTok that I've, I've reacted to. But it is kind of funny. I had a good time scrolling through these TikToks. Like this anxiety, the like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Who am I doing this for? I'm not enjoying it. I just have to sit in front of a camera. I pretend that I give a shit about what this homophobe said about gay people for like the fourth year in a row. I'm really tired. It's fine. It's fine.
But I also get this like deep pit of guilt over the fact that like I used to be so passionate about doing this. I would only ever post stuff that I was really proud of. I would spend so long trying to get the perfect take. And now I'm kind of just like getting through the week and being like, oh, okay, well, so I'm in the studio all week. Sup? That Play was out. it though. I've got to do mix notes. The whole thing. Uh, up until the K. I've got to do master notes. <laughs> playing a festival tomorrow. I've got to design merch. The t-shirts only had like nine left last night when I looked. Oh, and also I need to film a YouTube video. At this point, I'm not doing it out of passion. I'm doing it because it's a job. Like the truth is just that I've fallen out of love with making YouTube videos and that is heartbreaking. I mentioned it for the first time in therapy a couple weeks ago and I was like, oh, I wish that didn't come out of my mouth. And even saying that now is scary. Um, Cause like the idea of this not being a thing for the rest of my life Terrifying. I've always just thought I would make videos every week and I'm not saying that that's gonna change I'm not saying that I'm quitting obviously I'm Trying to make things better trying to make things easier But even even bringing up the subject that I'm not enjoying myself stresses me out so much And look, I do think a lot of it has to do with the fact that like the internet has changed around me I think the majority of it is that but let's go through things that have changed in my life that you know would impact how I feel about making YouTube videos As I said, uh, I've been doing this for 10 years. I started posting videos when I was like 15 I turned 25 a couple days ago. That in itself is terrifying, but the fact that all of that is documented on the internet, like every single week, that's a whole new level of shit. And some of you guys have been with me through every phase of the past 10 years. I started making videos when I was still in school. I would film videos in my dormitory. But yeah, you've seen me finish school. You've seen me come out twice. You've seen me move out of my parents' house. You've seen all the new piercings. You've seen all the stupid haircuts, the shit hair dye jobs. You've seen me go through several new diagnoses, uh, which that's, that's a whole ride in itself. You saw me document my entire transition. Not only did I post videos every month updating you guys on things that have changed with my body and my emotional state, you've seen my voice drop in tiny little increments. You've, you've seen me grow up. You've seen me go through puberty. You've seen me get top surgery. You've seen me become a musician that I thought I would never be able to do. Um, I, that, the idea of that terrified me. I would have panic attacks about it. And now you've seen me tour the US three times and like become friends with my favorite musicians. There is so much j just on this channel. And I, I, I used to think of it as just like, oh, it's just a video every week. It's what week, every week it's whatever, but it's so just not whatever. Like this is my life. And I don't want to be putting out sh about my life that I don't feel like I give a sh about it. And you also see me release an album about how growing up on the internet f me up. And what you're seeing right now is exactly that. Like I, I cannot separate who I am as a person from the internet because I developed who I was from the internet, which is why it's so scary that I'm not enjoying it. The big point is that a lot of what I'm doing right now feels inauthentic, which is horrifying, which is scary, which is so anxiety inducing because my whole thing is like being myself, being authentic. And it's not that I've like changed who I am on videos. It's just, it's just that I've just, you know, I've spent so many times, so many days just sitting in front of a camera doing things that I don't enjoy. When I started this off as a hobby, I would just post whatever the fuck I wanted um, because I felt like doing it. And in recent years, I've kind of caught myself out on like trying to manufacture the authenticity that I used to have. And that's not to say that like I'm fake now. I don't think I'm fake now, but the whole process of like setting up a camera and being like, hello underachievers, how are we doing? Here's fun things. I speak like this all of the time. I, you know, boohoo, like everybody hates their job. I don't hate my job. It is entirely, not entirely, mostly under my control, how much enjoyment I get out of it. And if, you know, if, if I'm sitting down every week or every month, cause I can't even sit myself down every week to film a video. If I'm sitting down that often and not enjoying what I'm doing and I'm the only person that's really making me do it, then there's a problem there. I think a big thing is that it's hard to know what my channel should be. Um, I love instructions. I love rules. I love knowing what is good and bad. I'm autistic as fuck. I logic my feelings. Like I don't really know how I feel until I find a logical reason for it and then I can understand them. So you can imagine this kind of thing being really difficult because I'm not sure what my channel is supposed to be. And like I said, like my channel is a visual representation and like documentation of my entire life from age of 15 to 25. It's not just like a CV where I write down jobs that I've had or like places I've worked and I just hand it in to whoever I'm applying to work for. It's literally my life, <laughs> which we know is not normal and probably not healthy, but it's what I've chosen to do. And I wanna start enjoying it again. And I feel, I feel hope. Like I know I'm doing the whole like, this is scary, but like the fact that I'm sat here making this video and not just like sat at home being really anxious 
anxious. The fact that I'm doing this is a good thing. So to go into more detail as if I haven't gone into enough detail at this point, just gonna start off with the fact that like, this is now a job. Like this isn't a hobby anymore. When I started out doing this, it was something I did for fun. Now it's something that I do every week. It pays the bills. It's something that's expected of me. I have almost a million people subscribed and, and, and hoping for content from me. And let's be honest, I've never had an actual job. I've never had a boss. I've never had anybody to be accountable to. And as somebody with ADHD who, who on the best of days struggles to actually get up and do the thing that I'm supposed to do, that's tough. Before I got signed, my week looked like hanging out with my friends for however long I wanted and then randomly getting a spur of inspiration at 3 a.m. filming a video until midday editing it and then uploading it the next day. And then I could spend the rest of the day doing whatever I wanted, just hanging out, just having fun. And then, you know, I had more time to think about what kind of videos I wanted to make. Whereas nowadays, I spend 99% of my time thinking about music, thinking about music videos, thinking about new songs, thinking about lyrics, thinking about touring, thinking about everything music related. Because, you know, I started this channel off because I was obsessed with My Chemical Romance, because I did covers. Everything has always been about music. Because music is also now my job, it's just really hard. It's just, just, I, I don't understand. <laughs> the point is that YouTube videos was something that was fun for me. It was something I did on my own terms. And now that I have such a insanely busy schedule, I get busier every year. Now that I have a busier schedule, I have to like schedule time to be creative. It used to be like, oh, okay, I've got this creative energy. Like I've got this, I sound like a tortured artist. Oh, I've got all this creative energy inside of me and I don't know where to put it. I have so much love. You know what I mean? I have to allot YouTube video time, which you know, if it, that doesn't work, you, you can't choose a time of the week, you can't plan ahead time in the week to be creative or to be in the mindset of creating a YouTube video. So leading up to that, I'd be setting up my camera being like, I'm so exhausted from yesterday, I don't have the energy, I'm not gonna enjoy filming, but I would still have to sit down and film because if I didn't film then, then I would have no time for the rest of the week, which meant that my YouTube channel would flop and everyone would hate me, the algorithm would bury me alive, and then I would have nothing. That's how my brain works. I was trying to like manufacture myself being in a good mood or like manufacture being the YouTube guy for two hours on this day every week. And I'm being for real and genuine slash uh, Jen. Which is just not, it's not how it works for my brain. And it's really unfortunate that I have ADHD and autism because those, they beat the shit out of each other to be honest. What also comes with this being my job now is, as I said, these bullshit social media events. No offense to anybody that's invited me. Seeing people try and manufacture authenticity, which is like, it, you just can't. I didn't come up with crazy marketing schemes. I wasn't like, oh, follow for follow. Let's start a follow train. I wasn't like, oh, I'll collab with this person and that will blow up my channel. I just posted whatever the sh I wanted to post and people liked it. And going to these events reminds me of everything that I hate that I've become in terms of being an influencer. I will never have a business mind. I'm always just gonna do whatever the sh I want because I'm too stubborn to do anything else. But the fact that I go to these events and I'm made to feel like I'm doing something wrong for not implementing this feature or not tagging my video with this tag. I care about the people that are involved. I care about my YouTube partners that I have such great relationships with that really help me out when some transphobe makes a video or just like invites me to events where I meet other people that feel the same way as me. It's like how I see some musicians view music as like maths or you know how like these big pop producers you'll go into the studio and they're like oh let's write a hit we have to use these chords and write about this thing and use this keyword like that's not how I work. I don't know what I'm saying at this point it just sucks it just sucks that I've allowed myself to to rot. <laughs> I'm just one guy who for whatever reason people were interested in and decided to watch things that he did for whatever reason this is important to me and you guys are important to me and I did, did not trying to encourage weird parasocial see this is hard this is hard what I did want to touch on um, is that a big part of this being a job for me now means that I'm essentially a product I'm not just a person who has thoughts and feelings I'm a product I'm a brand like why can I not just be a strange little guy who just does his things and people are normal about it hmm like the fact that it would be so easy to just sell myself out entirely and I could buy a house. Like this is not normal. This is not, my brain clearly cannot put up with this sh And I'm, I, by the way, I'm not complaining about like the money thing and being like, oh, poor me having morals and values. I'm, I'm just talking about in the sense that like this industry is terrifying. My audience has grown so much more than I thought it ever would. The fact that I almost have a million subscribers freaks me out, but it also means that like over the years I've become so self-aware 
so self-conscious to the point where like the way that my brain operates on a normal basis even completely removed from the internet if i'm just interacting with people in person i'm like oh what if i say the wrong thing and then they run with this and then they tell everybody that no offense said this like it and it's just caused me to overthink everything which just makes posting videos obviously very difficult. And Jesus Christ, body image, that makes things so much more f difficult. I documented my entire transition. I had people telling me every single day, hey, when is your voice gonna drop? When are you gonna get that beard? When are you gonna look more like a man? When are you, when are you gonna look different? When are you gonna look less like a girl? I could talk about this for weeks, but there's just like so many things that get in the way of me being comfortable on camera. And I think the thing that's been especially hard nowadays is comparing myself to myself seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago, where I was enjoying what I was doing and just feeling really disappointed. I've been watching some of my old videos I made and being like, oh sh that boy's having fun. And that's hard to watch and to think about. Okay, and last thing, I promise this is the last thing that's made it hard to film. Autism, autism. I got diagnosed and I will definitely be making a video about it. My next single is about it. But being autistic and, you know, getting the diagnosis and having to process that and look back on the whole of your life and realizing that you are masking and all those weird things you did as a kid, all those quirks, what well, autism. I would film videos like four times in a row because I didn't say things right or because I didn't like how I looked. But like knowing that it's because of autism and then like sitting down and being like, okay, now time to be myself. <laughs> now time to play that character, but it's not a character because it's me, but also, yes, it is. The autism also meant that I am incredibly stubborn. If I notice that something is going wrong, if I feel emotionally bad in a certain way, I will put off thinking about it because I'm terrified of change. The idea of even trying to slightly change the kind of stuff I'm doing in itself is so terrifying. So anyway, on to the future of this channel. What lies in store? It's not gonna be too different. I'm, I'm just wanna, just wanna enjoy myself. So that, that'll be the new thing. Me filming things that I enjoy and having more fun. So there's something to look forward to. I'm um, have a big old brainstorm with my friend Vegard who edits my videos. Say hi, Vegard. Hello, I've not spoken yet today. I'm currently editing this in bed. Hello Noah watching this and hello everyone else. Okay. I want to find a way that I can enjoy doing this and I have a lot of hope. And yeah, just, just a disclaimer, things are not gonna like immediately change. It's not like I'm gonna do a massive rebrand and be like, oh, this is a new guy. One thing that I do want to change, I don't want to rely on just reaction content. It feels soulless, it's not fun. And I don't want things to be purely about me being trans. Like I said this when I came out that I didn't want that to become my thing. And obviously that has become my thing in a lot of people's eyes. I want to maybe do more vlog stuff, more stuff with my friends. Speak more about the autism ADHD sh** because that's, I spent a lot of my time thinking about it. But yeah, I guess that's it. <sighs> Let me know your thoughts if you've ever had any similar feelings, emotions, situations. If you have any ideas for what kind of videos that I film. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing good. I hope I see a bunch of you in November at these shows. I promise you have the f***ing time of your life. But yeah, have a good day, don't. See you later, losers. Goodbye.